Well, hello, crafters, and welcome back to Brightmare. After our fishing expedition and finding the location for our mining camp, I came over here to the jungle. Breaking my boat and taking it with me in case I get lost. We're looking for bamboo, but I found some cocoa beans as well, which will give us brown dye right off the bat. Going to cut this off at the second level for this bamboo so that the uh, piece that's still in the ground will keep growing. And we'll grab these melons and take those back with us too because, hey, we might as well. Another piece of bamboo, which is really nice. I usually have to look all over the place to find this stuff, and I have a hard time finding it, but I'm finding it pretty easy right now. The thing that I'm not finding easy today is saplings for the jungle tree that really bites me later on because with that one tree i harvested it and i didn't get any new saplings so i'm gonna have to come back to get more jungle trees if i want more jungle wood after that i went looking for more bamboo i got in my boat went down the coast and i found this bamboo forest it's it's huge i've never seen one of these before i always have to get the bamboo one at a time and what surprised me here too was that uh there's podzel and i i thought that only grew in the mega spruce biomes but it's right here in the bamboo forest too and then as a bonus here in the forest i found this guy I fed him a little bamboo, and the animation of him eating that b bamboo is just too cute. When I got back from the jungle, this guy was here waiting for me. He's the new traveling salesman, the, the wandering trader in Minecraft. And uh, he had several different trades, and all of them were things that I haven't encountered yet that um, I don't have access to. But one thing he had that I wanted was pumpkins. And he had pumpkins for one emerald each. So I went ahead and I bought two of those so that I can plant some and get a pumpkin, a little pumpkin patch going. I'm looking forward to seeing more of these guys as we go on and uh, seeing what else we can get, uh, what other resources we can get from around the world. I set up a second little location on the other side of the ridge from the main camp where I can uh, work on the agricultural part of our little community. And I made a brown bed because I had the cocoa and I needed another bed, so I thought I'd try it out. Then I decided rather than having to climb up over this ridge, every time I want to go back and forth between the main camp area and the agriculture area, I decided to cut a little pass between the two sections so that we could easily walk back and forth without having to climb over it every single time. I think that's going to add a lot to uh, the quality of life whenever we have to go back and forth. And uh, I know the uh, people that live here would probably appreciate not having to climb that hill day in and day out as well. Down towards the bottom, I did encounter a little bit of stone, which is actually kind of good because I can use this uh, cobblestone. I've got plenty of stuff that uh, I actually need some cobblestone for, for tools and, and, and stairs and fences, and, or walls actually. So that was a little bonus, a little extra material gathering in the process of that too. I burnt through a few shovels making that system though. There's our jungle tree, our, our fated jungle tree that's only going to uh, give us one planting and no saplings. And I also planted a bunch of spruce trees and I just spaced them out because I don't think they'll grow if you smack them right together the way I'm doing with these oak trees. Now oak trees, we can smack these things down right next to each other, a big old block of them, and they'll grow, and as long as the leaves don't uh, occlude too much light, they'll grow right next to each other, and you'll have a big solid block of oak wood that you can just buzz saw through and uh, cut down and harvest. And they, they, it works really well. I tried the same thing with the birch trees, but unfortunately, doing it, lining it up with the birch trees in this block like this, 
I ended up getting back fewer saplings than trees that I had planted. So that's definitely not sustainable. Now once I planted the trees and had those going so that I could start making some wood, I wanted to expand a little pond area over here by this natural waterfall. Just have it flow naturally down into a little pond. So I dug out an area for that pond to live at and then I grabbed some water buckets and I'm going to go ahead and fill this whole area in with water. Uh, most places about two deep, a couple of small places it's three deep, and then a large portion of it is, is only one deep. Uh, now once you get a few buckets in here, your first two buckets just get it started, but then you have to get a third bucket and a fourth bucket in there to uh, create your, your uh, permanent water flow. Your, uh, and it, then you can pull more water out of the same area to keep filling the rest of it until the whole thing is full. And we're just putting in the last touches to get the, the top level of water. And we're going to fill that across. Now the lucky thing about these water mechanics here is that you don't have to make every single block directly one bucket to one bucket to one bucket to create the uh, source blocks. Once you've got two sides going, they'll flow together and create source blocks wherever two sources run into each other. And then you just have to fill in the little odds and ends uh, that create odd little pockets that don't automatically fill in. Once you get those filled in, then it's just a matter of a little bit of touch up to, to make it look right. Um, I carved a few more blocks out and then I added a few more blocks around the banks going up the side of the river just to make it look like it was more contained in a little bed. And then the whole purpose of this was that we can plant sugarcane around this little pond and have a nice natural looking sugarcane farm right here on the sides of this pond. And double duty I could come over here and go fishing with it instead of having to go all the way down to the ocean if I want to go fishing I can just come right over here. I decided that next to the pond coming back towards the rest of the agricultural area I'd go ahead and plant a big bamboo stand and get that going. I don't know if this will be the permanent home for this bamboo stand but right now I need to get this bamboo in the ground and get it growing so that when I can find some, uh, spider, some spiders and get some webs and get myself a whole, whole bunch of string, I'll be able to make plenty of scaffolding. I'm going to use scaffolding extensively in the mines. I'm not only going to use it for decoration and making it look like it's being used to mine sections, but I'm also going to use it in places for as an elevator to go up and down short distances. We'll have water elevators in there too, but for short, just one floor to the next, I'm thinking I'm going to use uh, scaffolding to go up and down really quickly. I, I think that's going to work real well. So now I've put in the basics of a wall separating the hill behind and the bamboo forest from where our main crop fields are going to go. Now we only need one water source block for every nine by nine square of crops. So what I'm doing here is I put the uh, I put the water I did put the water in and then I put a half slab at the top of that level and the water's still there. Then I put a wall section on top of that and a torch on top of that. I may come back later and change that up with uh, scarecrows once I have hay bales and jack-o'-lanterns, which shouldn't take too long now that uh, I've got uh, the crops starting to go in. Initially, I've only got a few seeds, and uh, so right off the bat, 
I'm not going to grow a lot, but the more I grow, the more seeds I get back, and the faster everything progresses. And then now we've got our basic pumpkin patch in, and I'm going to extend the wall along the walkway area over here, and the, uh, the farmer's house will go into the right of where we were walking there. And then just continuing to wall this off. Now it's time to come back up here and chop down these trees. I tell you what, this took a long time. There were a lot of trees here, and I harvested a lot of wood. And But it did take a substantial amount of time to uh, chop down. I know this looks really, uh, really kind of flashy and jerky here but I had to speed it up quite a bit to, to get an idea of to express an idea of just how much wood we were chopping down um, all together I've compressed about 10 minutes of wood chopping into about a half a minute 45 seconds now here you see I'm spacing these out because like I said my first experience with the birch uh, in a big block I got a reduced number of saplings I, I put I planted like 28 saplings and I got like 14 saplings back out of those trees so I spaced them out a little bit to see if we can do a little bit better here I'm doing my first gather and replant session now notice that I'm alternating rows between carrots and wheat so that uh, they'll grow twice as fast because Minecraft doesn't like it when you grow the same thing on next to each other on all four sides as long as you're in one axis if you're in two axes it'll s cut your growth rate in half now here I've come back and I've pulled up all of the spruce trees because none of them were growing and I reconfigured them into the mega spruce pattern to uh, grow the great big two by two tall spruce these are going to grow faster and they're going to yield more wood per sapling and it's just going to all around perform better so now I'm back in the garden expanding it I'm going to continue just expanding it replanting harvest and replant harvest and replant until I've got the entire field filled in with wheat and carrots and I have all of it growing and then we'll be able to start uh, working on getting ourselves some cows and pigs and sheep because we'll have those resources that we need to do that. Once, uh, and then we can also get the hay bales going, which we can use to get llamas. And I use those also to make scarecrows for uh, the farms and to light them up. And it looks a little nicer than just these stone columns like this. Again, the way we do this for each 9x9 nine nine area, we dig a hole, we put in our water, we put in a half slab on top of the water, and I'll show you here, see the water's still there, so we fill that back in, then I just put a column on top of that, and a torch on top of that. That way when you're harvesting, if you have just the torch sitting on the ground when you're harvesting, you might go through real quick and pull your torch up too, and this configuration will prevent you from doing that. Now I came back to test the birch again and see how we did on the saplings and we did not as poorly as before but we still harvested fewer saplings than trees even in this configuration so still not sustainable the the birch for the oak grows this way with no problem but for some reason the birch is not growing for me this way and I'm going to end up spacing it out even further to uh, see how far I have to go to make the birch work. Fortunately, I'm not going to use a lot of birch, so it's not as big an issue as if the uh, oak was doing this to me. So, But the oak is working great, and I'm not having any problems with that at all. So that's the good news, and we can probably live without, the, without so much birch. Now my pumpkins, my first row has come in, so I'm going to harvest those and I'm going to get the seeds from them and put in a second row for the pumpkins. I might have should have uh, put in melons, but right now I think I want the pumpkins more. 
I'm going to put another wall here because I want my pumpkins to all grow in the middle. And so having the two rows spaced out and then the walls on either side of them will cause each of these pumpkins to place its pump each of these pumpkin stems to page its pumpkin in that those middle two rows for me so I can go down there and nicely and easily harvest them uh, later on maybe I'll do an automatic pumpkin farm but for right now this will serve our purposes it'll give us more pumpkin than we need at the moment now next to this pumpkin patch I think I'm going to put in a temporary uh, cocoa bean growing plant and uh, I'm just laying jungle logs down on their side and then on each side of that I'm going to po plant my cocoa bean pods and those will grow and I'll harvest them and replant them and harvest them and replant them and again for right now this is going to give us more cocoa beans and brown dye than I'll possibly have any use for. So later maybe we'll need more and we'll do something a little fancier. But for now, that'll work. I decided at this point that uh, I'm going up and down this hill to where the trees, because the trees are up on this hill behind the agriculture section. And uh, I'm going up and down that quite a bit and having to jump and everything else to get up there. So I decided I might as well go ahead and put in a path to go up there to make it easier. And as long as I'm there, I guess I might as well get, grab this coal, right? So I'm just using a combination here of full cobblestone, full andesite, cobblestone slabs, andesite slabs, and, co and uh, cobblestone stairs. And I'm just kind of mixing it up a little bit to uh, give a little variation to uh, the pathway as it uh, climbs up the hill. Just uh, want to make sure that, you know, it looks a little bit, a little bit nice and, and not too uniform. Um, this is, after all, a working path going between an agriculture section, a farm section, and a, uh, essentially what's going to be the logging section. We're going to put a uh, woodcutter's cabin up here on top um, for the uh, person who tends the trees and, and keeps the mining camp supplied with the wood that they need to uh, build timbers in the mines and, and, and fires in the kilns and everything else. So, and here's, we're running into the podsel from one of the first of the, uh, the mega spruce that I planted. So, that's actually kind of nice. We're going to have podsel up in this area, which will give it a little bit different of a flavor from the rest of this uh, mining community. Because there isn't podsel anywhere else. It'll just be up on this hill where the, uh, where the mega spruce trees are. And again, we're just mixing in s some slabs, some full bricks, some stairs, and uh, just cobble cobblestone and andesite is, is all we're using for this path. So this episode was filmed just a little bit differently than the last episode you'll notice, or at least it was produced a little bit differently. See, I had a couple of problems that I ran into. First, I recorded way too much content for a single episode and I had to cut a lot of stuff to fit every to squeeze everything in to something under 30 minutes and secondly people mentioned that my volume that my gain was just a little bit low in that first video so I tweaked my settings a little bit and at first they sounded fine to me but when I finished doing all of that recording and I brought the files into Adobe Premiere Pro, the volume was just blown out and scratchy and echoey and, and sounded horrible. And I could barely listen to it, so I could hardly put you through that. So I decided to just chop up all my video into different 
little pieces to show a little bit of all the different things that I did during this last session. And um, then I just narrated over the top of it through uh, Adobe Premiere to describe what you were seeing. So hopefully that works for this episode and I'll try to get the uh, audio issues worked out for the next episode and I'll do a little bit of testing and, and bring the tests into Adobe and make sure everything looks and sounds okay before I go and record doing a lot of stuff. And that way we should get everything put together. And I just thought I'd finish the video up up here on the hill overlooking the agriculture section, the farm section, which is the part that we just finished doing. Um, next, I do want to, I'm going to build at least three buildings back there. One up on the hill behind me. You can see the pathway that I was doing when we finished up. Um, up at the top of that, I'm going to build the woodcutter's cabin, and it'll be a log cabin, I do believe. Down behind me and to your right, I'm going to build the farmer's house, the one that has the big field there, and he'll probably own the pumpkins too. But I'm going to build another little house near the, uh, near the pond, and uh, that'll be for the guy that tends the sugar cane and the bamboo. So that'll give us a nice little start, some uh, structures, and they'll each be done in a slightly different style because uh, these guys are not in the main community of the mining camp. And they'll probably use, you know, softer materials because they are uh, softer folk, maybe. But yeah, I'll get to work on that and uh, I'll bring you back in on the next episode so that uh, I can show you how I'm, how I'm building those things out. And then I'm really anxious to get started on that mine. I want to get dug down into to the ground. As you can still see, I'm still wearing just some uh, leather pants and some leather boots that I got while I was fishing. I didn't have a lot of luck fishing. Uh, I made my pole and I got some fish and I got some leather boots and a couple of, I think I got a bowl and a couple of other little things, but I didn't get any magic poles like I was hoping. And um, so I'm gonna have to find some spiders to kill to get some more string before I can do any more fishing. I really like fishing early game because it's one of the most it's one of the easiest ways to get powerful items in the very beginning of this game. Anyways, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to get to work over here building these people's houses because I know they're getting tired of living outside. And I will see you guys in the next episode of Brightmare. <laughs>